Yesterday, this morning's guest talked about education. This morning, he's going to tell you to mind your own business. Part two of Larry Biddle's coming up next. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're at the Charlie Brendel Building of the Coastal Carolinas Association of Realtors in one of the classrooms of the Fortune Academy, one of its 14 locations statewide. We're focused on part two of overachievement and we're visiting with Larry Biddle of Conway. Good morning, Larry. Good and morning. Rolls Inlet. Yes, that's and correct. And Rolls Inlet, you would shoot me or kick me under the table. You're not even wearing socks this morning. You kicked me twice, probably. I know. Uh -huh. If I. Uh, if I left Merle's Inlet out, that tremendous location of y'all's right down there, uh, you were kind enough to let us in the neighborhood about 10 years ago. Well, we're glad you're there. Yeah. And, uh, it's, uh, it is a special place, no it question really about it. It really is. You know, my uncle, last week, uh, last Tuesday, our new ad director at the Herald just moved to us, came to us from the state. He'd been a retail manager over at the state in Columbia, and he's staying at the Inlet House until he and his wife can sell their home in Sumter and move, uh, move down to the beach. And hearing my uncle talk about, A, buying that tract in 94, and then having a guy named Joe Matello build the house yes, there. Yes, very He's special. A tremendous builder. He and his two sons. Yeah. I've heard Danny Isaac talk about Joe Matello building homes, a rare breed. Joe, Joe built my Casey and Kim's house Is that uh, right? in Conway. Yeah. yeah. And he builds one house at a time. That's, That's how right. he does it. He did uh, Jimbo and, and now our house in, in ten, 10 months. I mean, it's yeah. been a heck of a long time out there. Right. A heck of a long time. You know, so much has to happen. i got to admit, wearing this great tie in honor of you as an educator, but also this pen you gave me yesterday, which I highlighted the tremendous ceremonies you all had last Friday, a week ago today, right. out at Coastal, uh, the inauguration of uh, David A. DeCenzo, Dad, right. as you all call him. Yeah, that was that's a big what, day. Like, the kids came up with that. I mean, I've seen it on his on his cuff, you know, embroidered, but yeah. that's what the kids have started doing, the students out there. I love so it. That's, it is great. Yeah. I love it. That's gonna, a real celebration. Special relationship. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, there's, there's, you shared with us the great quote of that kind when you presented me this yesterday that uh, this great, uh, there's also some great quotes and you brought some books with you and there's so many things we could talk about in the next 20 minutes, Larry, but we wanted to get a little bit into Quinces Five, a new group. Obviously, we talked a lot yesterday about uh, Justin's a Renaissance program and I believe for viewers who, uh, who wanted to look that up, Justin's.com slash Renaissance. Right, and, or, or now it's, it's really uh, Justin's.com slash EdServe. Ed Serve. Ed okay. Serve is Educator Services. So it's a okay. whole division now uh, of, of the company. Oh, great. Which I'm is glad really you exciting. Said that. Yeah, so that's good. Early this morning, I went to a website, another website, you're, another group you're now involved with, Quin Quincis 5. Quincis 5, yeah. It stands for uh, Quintessential System 5. Uh, the concepts are all based on five components that we, uh, we teach. And uh, it's a lot of things we've learned. It's a lot of this research that I brought. Uh, that uh, really helps uh, companies or any any institution, frankly, uh, whether it's government or businesses or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, get a better handle on how they get more results with more people. Do companies need help, Larry? Absolutely. Do they really? Uh, yeah. All the research uh, shows that about 79% uh, of the people leave their jobs due to lack of appreciation. That's, oh, come on. That's the research. 79% of people that leave their jobs leave because of a lack, lack of, appreciation. of appreciation. Yeah, wow. that's right. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's enormous. And, uh, you that know. is right on the front of uh, y'all's website. There are three big, uh, as I went there this morning, that's Q-U-I-N-T-S-Y-S-5.com. Five five exactly. That's For folks who go there and check it out, three tremendous ones. There's one at the bottom. I couldn't even figure out what all those zeros were. Five trillion, maybe. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's the cost of, of disengaged employees mm -hmm. that are not engaged, they're not passionate about what they do, or, mm -hmm. or, or uh, you know, and uh, uh, it, I brought a piece here that's really powerful, I think, and, and it's a great article. It's what, re what leaders really do. It's a Harvard review, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and it says, uh, the whole purpose of systems and structures is to help normal people who behave in normal ways to complete routine jobs successfully. Day after day, it's not exciting or glamorous, but that's management. 
Okay, so you're ma managing is kind of things driven. Leadership is different. An achieving achieving grand visions always requires a burst of energy. Motivation and inspiration energize people, not by pushing them in the right direction as a control mechanism, but by satisfying basic human needs for achievement. Mm -hmm. A sense of belonging, recognition, self-esteem, and a feeling of control over one's life, and the ability to live up to one's ideals. Such feelings touch us deeply and elicit powerful responses. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you look at this, the good thing about uh, in the education world, and I'm, you know, I guess uh, people call me a weirdo because I'm an educator and a businessman, mm -hmm. but uh, both... What happened in all this is things we've learned that I learned in it. I took a business approach to education, and, 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 and now we're taking an education approach to business because I asked the American Resort Development Association at their international meeting in, in Florida uh, not too long ago, is teaching and learning a critical part of your business? <laughs> and they all sat there like, oh, my gosh, yeah. We never thought about it. Right. I said, well, you know, if you want to learn about teaching and learning, you might want to talk to a few educators, because mm -hmm. that's what we do. Mm -hmm. And our philosophy is to, uh, you know, grow people. Uh, one of the things we said is, you know, if you don't mind, you know, we had this thing called mind your own business. Mm -hmm. Mind your own business. Which right. comes up on the first part of the right slide. The right. And then bingo, behind it comes, if you don't mind, we'd like to improve your organization's results. Your own future depends on recognizing the most valuable resource in business, your people. Mm -hmm. And so we said, and I've said, and I've said for a long time, if you don't grow your people, you're not going to grow your business. You won't, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So how do you grow your people? Um, and then along comes Toyota Talent. Just came out. It's a 2007. Right, right. Uh, what a success story Toyota is. Mm -hmm. You know, go back 40 years and think about what the Japanese made. Junk. Mm. But no one's laughing at a Lexus today. No, no. And, you know, if you look at this, the, the, there's two books. Uh, one is called The Toyota Way. That one came out in 03. Uh, Toyota built their entire enterprise around 14 principles. Mm. Period. Laid them out early. And they got them from us. They got them from us. It came out of the World War. It came out of the 40s. And they never left those principles. Mm. Uh, and their philosophy is that we're not looking to be the idea of the month club, which I think people get caught up in far too often, whether it's education or business. They're caught up in the idea of the month club. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and Toyota says, we not only build cars, we build people. Mm -hmm. I've heard that. Man, is Probably that Probably out of powerful? your lips, yeah. You know, we not only build cars, we build people. Can you see that when you go to a plant? Can you feel it? Do you see yeah, it? Yeah, you people? can. You, you really can. can. You can see it in schools. You can see it in churches. You can see it where it's going on. Mm -hmm. Because you just can't take the Toyota philosophy and their systems if you're not building the people. Their philosophy is grow the people. Mm -hmm. Okay? And motivate the people and find people who are passionate and appreciate the people. Mm -hmm. This book, the character uh, principle, the character uh, principle, you know, nothing better than purpose-driven recognition. See, we have a tendency, I think, in recognition to say, "Good job, good job, good job, nice job, way to go." That's generic. Let me give you purpose-driven recognition, Greg. Mm. As an educator and a businessman. I really appreciate the depth of the things you do mm. in this program, the research you go to, doing your homework, doing it right. Your sincerity is strong. And this is a great program because it shows what the Carolinas are doing. Mm. That's purpose-driven. Rather than say, great, do great job, Greg. <laughs> so how do we take that? You know, how do we live that? How do we become that? And uh, a lot of this Quinces piece came out of my one-year stint with learning as leadership uh, mm -hmm. and, and going through all that, which is an intense corporate think tank. Very expensive, 
started in France with uh, a lady named Claire Neuer. Passed away. She passed away in '99. She was a Holocaust survivor. And uh, her daughter and, 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 and son and, and her husband carry on their work, uh, mm -hmm. but it ended up in the West Coast. We've done a lot of that at Burrs and Chapin. Mm -hmm. uh, very powerful, very intense. It's nine, the first one's called Personal Mastery. It's nine days, 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. daily, nine days. Mm -hmm. And then, and, and it's a one-year program. You get an executive coach every two weeks. So, I mean, it's, it's they really peel the onion, your own. I mean, you know, that's the way it works. And, and uh, learn a lot. I got a lot of insights there. Do a lot of reading, looking all the time at, at these things. Uh, and, uh, you know, I was with a guy who wrote a Ph.D. He wrote his doctorate on, on Renaissance. Uh, John McEwen from, uh, he was He at, wrote his doctorate about the Renaissance right. program? Yeah, and there have been wow. four or five written. Is and several right? master's degrees, yeah. And it's very good. And, and John, he and I presented at the national level a lot together. And he would say to all the educators, do not just read educational research. Because we don't have any money in education to do a lot of research. You want to read real research, you read the business research. Because they got the money. I mean, this carrot principle, based on a 10-year study of 200,000, mm, mm. you know, first yeah, break all the rules, right. which is an, a great trilogy. Uh, now discover your strengths and put uh, and and follow follow the path. I think the third one was, but mm. you know, th that's 40 years of research with Gallup mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and and 12 questions that have been asked all over the place. And everything that we saw, how full is your bucket? Mm -hmm. You know, th these pieces began to come together, and so six or eight of us, you know, said, you know what, we're getting all these questions all the time, and these folks are in Ohio and California right. and here in North Carolina and other places. And uh, we just said, you know, we're going to put something together to take to corporate America, to businesses, small businesses, government, whoever, because in the final analysis, it's all about growing your people. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I presented... Uh, Quinces to uh, the uh, South Carolina Main Street directors down at Palm Key right. uh, two months ago now, I guess. And I'm uh, talking to the state executive director. And I said, you know, uh, Beppe, I said, uh, in the final analysis, no matter what it is, it's all about your people. Mm -hmm. So how do we grow our people? How do we recognize our people? How do we celebrate our people? M most celebrations in, in, the, in the business world, in education too, are how soon can we get this over with? Right, right. That's not the way to do it. Yeah. We, we talk about sell events. You know, how do you really recognize? And, and, and is the recognition, like, you know, yesterday when I gave you that Coastal Carolina pin right. and it's on a card. Right. Uh, we just didn't throw it in a sack and say, well, here's the pin. Do you like one of those? Right. You know, so it's that little piece mm -hmm. that really makes it something. Can you really, the old idea, it's not an adage uh, that hadn't been around for a long time for nothing, can't teach an old dog new tricks. Can you, Larry? I mean, can you really I, I think you can. impact old you can. dogs? Yeah, you could. Yeah, America? you can. Yeah. Yeah. It's not just fleeting. They're not picking something up. Hey, I love Larry. He's a superstar. I've been to this conference. for. I mean, you can really impact a 55-year-old executive or a 60-year-old or 45 and have something that will sink in with them. Yeah, purpose-based, mm -hmm. uh, something that, uh, you know, uh, let's take a 55-year-old. Right. Okay? Right. And, and let's, let's bring him up in front of the company and talk about, in specific terms, the impact he's had on this company. Right. Year after year. The ideas that he came up with and right. so forth. Mm -hmm. And, and, and let's, let's, purpose, let's, let's purposely recognize all of that. Mm -hmm. And then give him a $300 Mont Blanc pen mm -hmm. with his name on it. It has a serial number. Mm -hmm. As a thank you forever. You see, now it's a different deal. Now he's really, wow. You mean that? You know, this is not a BIC. Mm. <laughs> Absolutely, it's not a BIC. Right. You know? Uh, and, and so we got to get better at how we recognize and what we use to recognize. Because uh, we, we tend to do a lot of slices of time. Mm -hmm. And we tend to try and get it over with. And we get, get, get Harry up there and say, good job, Harry. You know, thanks for your 25 years of service. Well, man, two sentences about 25 years of service. Let's dig into the 25 years of service. Mm. And let's start recognizing broad and deep. It's like another concept we use because we only tend to recognize the superstars all the time. You know, the top million dollar producer. Right. Well, how about the rookie who just got his first listing? Why don't we hold that up? Mm -hmm. We can hold that up. Mm -hmm. You know, we got to look at where people are and, and realize that you want to recognize 
recognize what they've done uh, and, and tie them to the sense of belonging to the enterprise. And this needs to happen how often? Does it need, I mean, you're thinking about a big organization. When you're always talking to Toyota or big, big groups for a, small employers in our area, viewers who are watching who work with a small, I mean, work in a group of 15, let's say, or 10, should, they, should the leaders in those organizations be making this effort constantly? How do should they? Be, you, should be, you should be doing it every day. Right. It should be part of your makeup. Yeah. That you appreciate people doing stuff mm -hmm. extra, mm -hmm. going above and beyond. And you thank them all the time. Mm -hmm. But and we we tend to do you know we tend to do the recognition at the Christmas party. That's mm -hmm. once a year. Mm -hmm. And we say how quick can we get it over with because the band's coming back. Mm -hmm. Let's get let's stick it in there. Well, that's not good. You know, uh, mm -hmm. you got to do it often. Folks don't get tired of hearing. They don't get tired of hearing praise on race. No, day. no one has ever quit for being over appreciated. Yeah. No one. Yeah. No one ever. Right. That's the power of the carrot principle. It takes you through probably 25 myths mm -hmm. of recognition. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the problem is because you, if you only do it, if you only do it once, if you only do it once a year at the at the end of the year or the Christmas party, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. That's what creates all the stuff. If you're doing it all the time, it becomes part of the culture. And it should right. be part of the culture. Right. Uh, you know, we all know about Maslow, for sure. You know, we all studied Maslow's hierarchy. Greg and, didn't. Go ahead. Well, I mean, a little, uh, Maslow's hierarchy says, you know, self-fulfillment self, self and, and other things. Salary is like fifth on the ladder. Food, shelter, clothing, basics. Right. You know, it's, that's down on fifth. And I recall, I recall asking a major consulting firm that was doing something for us at BNC, and they, they produced this major report. Right? They hated to buy that. You were on the board, yeah. <laughs> well, I was just sitting there listening, watching, reading. I had it in advance, and so we, we broke. And we, I was out in the lobby, and I said, "Well, now y'all got recognition real high on the on the list here. Well, how do you recognize people?" Well, I don't know. We, we don't ever really thought about that. I said, "Well." You know, duh. We all say, I said, it's Maslow's hierarchy to the to the right on it and lasered in. Mm -hmm. But but you didn't. You know, you don't know. You don't talk about that. I said, you know, uh, far too often our, our recognition is too seldom, right? Not visible. Uh, you know, you give someone a Mont Blanc pen, they keep it forever. Yeah. And why do we wait when when Harry is is seventy five and going to retire and give him a watch? Give him his Mont Blanc at ten. You know, and uh, you know, so he w uses it every day. Right, right. I mean, people say, "Oh man, that's Harry. He's been here ten years. He, he's got a Mont Blanc. See his name on that thing? That thing's even got a serial number." Uh huh. See, yeah. people are going, and it, because he's earned it. Right. I'm not saying we just give it to everybody because you got to earn it. But let's recognize, let's recognize the 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 the, the learning and the performance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so vital. You're clearly very emotional about this, Larry, and I'm glad you are. It, it comes across. I'm sure viewers are interested in that. People you meet one on one. I saw on the website you're giving out your mobile phone. You want folks to call. Absolutely. I mean, there's a there's a way to reach Larry Biddle. He can be tracked down. It's all there at Quince's Five. Dot com. Almost at times, I hate to send folks somewhere because they may say, "Well, there's his mobile number. I'll give that guy a call. I want to find out call. more about." I don't, but you know, want folks to call. We, we may doze, but we never close. That's right. That's right. For <laughs> folks who missed you yesterday, talking about power and apps, it's it's critical. I can see with all going on that you're doing, you've got to think about that. There was a great piece about you, Larry. I think Conway High School was sending something out to help honor you, recognize you years ago. And it had four things, and I don't want you to get emotional, but I would when you think about those things. Parent, businessman, linguist, and educator. Of course, all four of those critical. Critical. Which one of those is most important to you? Parent. Parent is the most parent. important. Now, grandparent. Right. Now, six grandchildren. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so parent, grandparent. Right. For sure. Educator, so critical. You serve that role as a parent. I mean, you're an educator as a that, parent. The, first yeah. par the parents are the first teachers. Right. You know, right. very important. And a lot of uh, a lot of parents serve that role. I mean, educators serve that role as parents, oftentimes. No question. Yeah, yeah some kids. I've, I've been with kids who don't have parents. Right. You know, so we had to be their parents. Mm -hmm. uh, that's just part of it. Mm -hmm. If you're an educator, Charlie. You do? Brind Charlie Brindell was with us earlier in the week on Tuesday, Larry, and hearing him talk about his father leaving at age four. And his mother and uh, and his seven-month-old sister, they were there in a position and had nothing. And 
lived in a tent at times in Gastonia under a train track. Uh, hearing him talk about that was a powerful thing. And as you say, some educators really have to serve that parental role. Linguists and businessmen have been great things. Clearly, as if you weren't a lingu had you not been interested in another language, you wouldn't have met your bride to be. That's right. So clearly, that's a very important one. And then, of course, it may, may not have gone the same business route that you ended up taking had you not met your bride to be and become a parent and uh, an educator. It's amazing how all four of those tied together as I saw those on the top of the sheet. And uh, it was a fascinating. Yeah, they do, I guess. Yeah. 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 You know, when we think about some way of re re rewarding excellence in academics, what we talked about yesterday with Renaissance, and now rewarding excellence in the workplace with Quincy. So there are other things going on right now, Larry, that uh, outside of those two, where you're finding ways to reward and uh, excellence. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, as I, as I look at uh, the people who are talking to us, uh, we've got someone in the West from Boeing talking to us. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got uh, someone in Texas uh, with Nationwide that wants to look at. We do a lot on communication, very critical in, in learning. Communication is so mm -hmm. vital. Uh, I, uh, I've been, been doing some things with the Municipal Association of South Carolina. Right. Um, and I'm doing, I'm doing uh, in December the uh, human resources, all the human resource managers. Wow. Uh, in uh, Greenville at the Hyatt. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there's a hundred and some of them that are working the, across the state and all that and of course done Main Street. I've done, it's been funny, it's really been great to do ARTA um, doing their thing uh, sometime the end of this month I guess. That's the Association of Resort Resort Development. development. Right, uh, right. Because uh, you know it's one thing, building a resort is one thing but right. guess what? It's the people that are going to deliver the service. Right. So if you don't grow your people, you're not growing yeah. your timeshare, your resort, your golf course. It, it doesn't matter. Does uh, Jenny travel a lot with you, Larry? She does. Uh, she looks at my, uh, we're going next week. I'm, we've got two big things in California in October. Right. Uh, so we'll be out there. And, of course, I grew up out there and have friends all sure. up and down the West Coast. So she's going to that. Let, she'll look at my schedule and say, you know, North, wanna... North Madisonville, Kentucky. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> have a great trip, Larry. But Maui? Oh, yeah. yeah well, let's go to Maui or, yeah, you know, yeah. California or wherever. But, yeah, she, she does. And, of course, you know, I have an 89-year-old father in November. Uh, Your father will be 89. He'll be 89. Yeah. And uh, he's down there at the inlet with us. And, uh, you know, he fed the Flying Tigers. He was their master sergeant for the Flying Tigers. Is that right? And, uh, you know, so he's with us. And so we've got little, you know, some challenges with 89 year olds. I yes. mean, you know, they're. they're uh, Your mother's no longer here. My mother passed away. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So. Well, South Carolina is a great place to have folks in Shirley Ulrey County, and you're down in Georgetown there, but uh, along the Strand, yeah. great place to keep folks together. It is. Yeah, it really is. No question about it. You know, so many activities that have to happen, uh, and going back to, without highlighting that, you think about, uh, had you not been there for your junior year in Madrid, and had you not uh, ended up in Conway, Larry, where do you think you'd be? What do you think, uh, where do you think you would have had, do you think you would have somehow gotten involved in making a difference and uh, doing something like Renaissance? Had you been in Sacramento, for instance, or St. Mary's College, wherever that is, that's in, on the West Coast as well. And, right. Yeah. I mean, do you think you would have gotten deep into education and making a difference in others' lives and encouraging, rewarding of excellence in others? Um, uh, the thing, the thing that comes up when you ask that question is uh, a fifth grade teacher. I was, I was educated by the Catholic sisters, the Holy Cross sisters, for mm -hmm. eight years. And then I had the Christian brothers for eight years, so I've got, <laughs> you know, I've got, uh, and brother, yeah. Yeah, I got a, lot, a lot of education, uh, 16 plus. And uh, uh, it was open house, and my parents had gone to, it was Immaculate Conception in Sacramento in Oak Park. And... Uh, I wanted to be a graphic artist, and, cause, so I, was, I drew this baseball picture, right. and, uh, I, and I said, and, and so my parents came home, and I said, did you see my artwork, you know, at school? Oh, yeah, we saw it. And they said, well, Sister Jacinta said, you're going to be a teacher. I, and that kind of stuck. Mm. Uh, I it's never left, yeah. you know, because now it's the nation. Oh, well, actually, beyond the nation. I mean, we're in Canada, and we're doing stuff all over the place. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been in Europe and Panama and wherever, mm -hmm. teaching concepts, but helping people grow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Trying to grow people. 
Jacinto, that's great. And introducing them, folks, as you did yesterday morning, to power naps as well. That's going to keep them strong and growing faster. I'm sorry we've run out of time, Larry, but uh, thanks so much for being with us, and congratulations on the big inaugural ceremonies and the successful events last Friday. Thank you. They're in Conway and celebrating folks from all over the country in to uh, recognize a dad. David yep. DeCenzo, that's a big honor. Thanks again for this great pen. You're welcome. Great being with you. Thank this you. Morning. Appreciate what you do. Very definitely. Stay tuned to more Carolina People with Larry Biddle coming up next. Education is not the filling of a pail, but the lighting of a fire. Not the filling of the pail, but the lighting of a fire. Think about that, William Butler Yates there. The opportunity to really make a difference. And it, it starts early, it goes late. You heard uh, Larry talking about educators that are now getting involved in, uh, in the business world. Now getting involved in the business world. Quinsys5.com. Quinsys, Q-U-I-N-T-S-Y-S-5.com. That very strong other fact that uh, we didn't talk about during the interview, 75%, 75% of the U.S. workforce is disengaged on the job. 75% of the U.S. workforce is disengaged on the job. And apply that back to the uh, Back to that time in, there in Sacramento, if Sister Jacinta had fallen in that category, in that 75%. Fortunately, she fell in the 25%. Fortunately, she was encouraging and was not disengaged on the job and encouraged enough to share with Larry's parents there when he was in fifth grade. That boy's going to be a teacher. He's going to become an educator. He's going to make a difference in the lives of others, just like hopefully I'm making in the difference of his life. It's that early opportunity not to be disengaged. Make a difference in, in others' lives. Make a difference. Go online to quinces5.com.